It's no secret that the healthcare systems in Canada and the US have long been compared to one another. And as neighboring countries, it's hard not to pin the two against each other. North of the US border, the Canadian system is single payer and mostly publicly funded. While in the US, it is multi-payer and mostly private. It has been said though, that the US system could potentially adopt a similar system to Canada. In terms of treatment potential, one thing is glaringly clear. The populations between each countries are drastically different. In the US, there are roughly 330 million people, while in Canada, there is just over 37 million people. Which means no matter which way you slice it, the opportunity to treat millions of patients is much more widespread in the US. At this year's Bloomberg Healthcare Investor Conference, the Investing News Network asked four company executives their thoughts on the healthcare systems, with answers ranging from drug development and the differences between the model systems. Dan Legault, CEO of Anti Therapeutics, spoke about drug development, most notably in Canada and as it relates to pain. Well, without getting too um, political, um, just staying more on the drug development side, uh, Canada is a wonderful place for uh, drug development, particularly in pain. Um, of course, Canadian scientists, U.S. scientists um, think much alike, and it's, it's science after all. And, and so the Toronto area it really is second only to the Boston area in terms of the breadth and, and uh, depth of, of uh, life science. However, in pain, there are statistical differences in pain studies between people who have insurance and people who don't have insurance, which is a problem that sort of plagues pain research in the United States. You have to do larger trials and more complex trials to, to come up with the same clinical um, re results, whereas in Canada, everyone is just on essentially government Medicare, right. and so it, it's just a beautiful apples to apples comparison right along the board. So, I mean, the, the main pain assessment index in wide use around the world, the gold standard around the world, WOMAC, was um, stands for Western Ontario and McMaster University, so developed in Canada. Meanwhile, Ed Gaditis, CEO of Aceris Pharmaceuticals, spoke about the two systems and how they differ in terms of public and private models. Two different systems, I mean the public model in Canada predominantly uh, in terms of the method of payment, obviously in the United States is a much more private commercial model of healthcare. I think, you know, you, one can debate the merits of, of, of both systems. Um, you know, as a Canadian living in Canada, I, I do like the, the universality of access that we have in Canada. Um, as a business person looking at, at the global business that we have with Natesto, I still need to look at sort of the opportunities that we have. And Canada is an important home market for us, but it is still a relatively small market and our success is ultimately going to be in the United States. So commercially, North America, the U.S. is still the leader in innovation and, and, and return for healthcare. But as again, as a Canadian living here in Canada, I do appreciate the system that we have and it takes care of us all, which is a great thing. Absolutely. William Rice, CEO of Aptos Biosciences, similarly touched on the single payer system in Canada and the private system in the U.S., speaking on how the Medicare and Medicaid system could potentially expand to the entire U.S. population. Oh my, uh, I'll try to stay out of the political aspects of that. Uh, so you have effectively a single payer system uh, in, in Canada. It's, it's a government-based system. Uh, I see many positives to that. Uh, you, the, pa the patients tend to have uh, care ahead of time so that they're not waiting until something goes wrong. That's one of the best benefits of it. Uh, but then it's also focused on required activities, required medical procedures, not necessarily on those that are not required. Uh, in the U.S.-based system, it's uh, of course we it's it's a private system uh, primarily, except for the people who are on uh, Medicare, Medicaid. Right. So at some point, there's talk about uh, expanding the Medicaid, Medicare, Medicaid system out to the entire population, and then on top of that, having the, uh, the if you can afford it, then have the additional uh, private insurance. So hopefully, in the future, we'll be able to have all that, and that way we can address all the patients who have the required medical needs as well as the, uh, the, the less required. Right. Lastly, Serge Verreau, CEO of Cressida Therapeutics, touched on the size of each market, touching on how many pharmaceutical companies need to go through all the phases of a clinical trial, which could also benefit Canada. So about the size, of course that we're one tenth of yeah. the U.S. market, and in terms of prescription uh, market, uh, this is two different types of philosophy. You know, just from a pricing point of view and from a size of Canada, it doesn't make sense to develop a product and to go to all the phases uh, just for the Canadian market. So 
uh, most pharmaceutical company needs to uh, uh, to develop a phase one, two, and three for the U.S. market, and then Canada would benefit. Of course, that from uh, a prescription point of view, uh, the healthcare system in U.S. Uh, work kind of the same way with. Uh, uh, healthcare practitioner, also reimbursement is very important. Same thing as in Canada with private and public reimbursement. So both um, both markets are different, and one company cannot possess both without having a presence on the Canadian market. And this is why uh, Trusita for us, we want to position and be strong in the Canadian market, not exactly in the U.S. market. So we're licensing our innovation to U.S. But in Canada, our intent is to in-license uh, prescription drug product for the Canadian market because our team know pretty well the Canadian market and how to play a uh, good role in it. In short, the answers from these four CEOs touch on the differences and similarities each system has, while also touching on what companies need to do in order to bring innovation to the space. While the access to care in Canada has many positives, for companies developing drugs and new products, the U.S. still remains a clear leader in terms of innovation.